Hello everyone and welcome to this short tutorial. In this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how can you start a conference in Canvas Instructor LMS. Let's start right away and let's see how can we actually do it. Okay, uh, when you uh, join your course, there's one thing that you should check first. Uh, check if you have the conference tab. If your conference tab is disabled like this, the students will not see it. So even if you start a conference, your students will not be able to join. So if you see this little eye, which is crossed out in your course, please go to settings, then go to navigation and just drag and drop, drag and drop and pull it up and just save the navigation so that the conferences actually appear uh, on your student's profile. So please make sure to do that. That's very important. Okay, now that you've enabled your conference, what should you do? I'm going to end this because this is an old conference. Okay, the thing that you should do is click on the blue button and start a new conference. I'm going to copy paste this name and do it again. Uh, and I will explain why. Uh, when you start a conference, the conference name is going to be the default name of your course. Please do not use a default name for your course. Why? Simply because students uh, tend to just start new conferences by themselves. So you, in order to avoid that, write a message, join here, do not start your conferences, and then improve your career prospects. When you click update, you officially started your conference. Now, to kick start it completely, click on the button start and wait for the new button to open uh, in another window. While you wait for this to happen, I'm going to go back for one second and show you. Uh, as you click start, you're going to have in progress button and and join. Uh, what students usually do, students just click on the blue button and they start their own conference. And you should try to avoid that, why? Because every time when you start a conference, everybody receives an automatic email from the platform. So basically students will receive an email called join here, do not start your conferences, improve your career prospects in their inbox. And they can actually click to join and open this conference directly from their inbox. Now, if you are uh, having a lot of students, of course, if, even if you're having uh, just a few students, always instruct them not to wait for this email. Tell them, okay, the lesson starts in seven, please be uh, on the platform at 700, tell them to click on conferences and to just join manually. Why? Because the emails that are sent by the platform are default emails. They're not sent by the teacher. And unfortunately, because of the server and everything, they can be late. So sometimes you can start a conference at uh, 15 minutes to seven, but there is nobody joining it in, at least at, uh, until 7.15, which is terrible. You're losing time. So please, instruct your students to come on time and just click the button directly. Tell them not to wait for any kind of emails because they can be late. They're not reliable. Let's go back to uh, the conference uh, tool itself. When you join, when you open this new window, make sure to click on microphone, make sure to click allow and wait for the echo test. Hello. 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 If you click on the audio, you are currently the only person in this conference. Yes. If you skip this step, your sound will not be active. If this blue button is not active here, it means that you haven't turned on your audio. Now, what can we do inside? What are some things that can, uh, that big blue button and canvas structure allow you to do? So, first of all, if you click on this button, you can use all users, you can save username, you can even lock them. If you lock them, nobody's going to be able to join late. That's something that uh, I usually don't do. But if you want to lock the classroom without other people being able to join if they're late, that's your favorite button. You can create breakout rooms. Uh, it works pretty much the same as every other conference tool. Let's test it out. Number of rooms, two. You can even make up to eight rooms here. Uh, what I love here is uh, the duration option because we don't have this in other, uh, in other uh, tools. So you can set the time for your uh, breakout room. And that's amazing because after this, uh, the students will automatically go back to the regular room. Uh, another thing that I love here is that you can use the allow students to choose a breakout room to join. That's amazing. So you can actually let them select where they want to join. 
of course, maybe it's better to randomly assign them, click this button or assign them manually, because then you can avoid uh, just uh, everybody coming to one group or another group and then having one empty group. So whatever you want, whatever uh, fits your classroom uh, the best. Now, another thing that I love here are shared notes. If you click here, you're going to get some shared notes. How can you use them? Well, you can write, uh, you can uh, write, basically <laughs> that's it. After the class, you can download them and you can save the notes. So whenever you're writing something, if there are students that maybe uh, don't understand something, usually I use it to write down things the students don't know so we can practice it more. So I always ask, do you feel the need to practice uh, this kind of task again? Do you feel the need to practice and learn this strategy uh, in more depth? So I write, for example, try to include more blah, blah, blah. And then after this lesson, you can save it. Also, you can just write notes for students. That's another thing that you can do. So whatever fits your, your lesson is fine. To continue, if you click on this plus here, you can start a poll, upload a presentation, and share an external video. We're not going to talk about sharing the video. As you can see, the video is off here. Uh, we're going to start a poll. So what can you do? Uh, usually you can ask a question on the screen like this. Let's give it a shot, let's do it. So are you feeling, are you feeling okay today? You can make it bigger, smaller, change the number, uh, change the color or whatever you want. Then start a poll, yes or no. When people answer, you can publish it and the answers appear here. So that's another way for you to have uh, interactivity with your students because it's amazing and it's already included. And of course it's free, so it's not like other tools. You can make a custom tool, you can write uh, I, I just don't have any ideas. Test one, test two, test three, and just start a custom poll, publish it, and you will see what students think. So generally, it's, ama it's an amazing tool for formative assessment. So whatever you want to do with it, it's there, it exists. To continue, you can upload a presentation. Uh, so you can, uh, this is a current default presentation PDF. So you can upload a PDF or PowerPoint. Let's give it a shot. Uh, I'm just going to upload one of my worksheets randomly and they're in PDF. So basically you can use whichever you want. Uh, you can use uh, PDFs as well. If the PDF is big, it's going to take some time to upload. Unfortunately, this one seems to be large. So we're going to wait for it to be um, uploaded. While we wait, I just want to tell you that you can uh, allow students to download it, or you can disallow students to download it if you want to protect your lesson materials, which I often like to do. Uh, as it uploads, yes, we're going to keep waiting. I'm sorry. Uh, this is useful if sometimes you have issues with sharing your screen. Sometimes sharing your screen can fail, so you can upload it, but make sure that your internet is good for this because it can take a while for it to upload, and I have a very fast internet connection. so. Now it's converting it, processing. So when you upload, make sure that your PDFs are not large like this one, because this one has very high quality pictures. <clears throat> as, as you can see, it's here. Now you can go from a slide to slide, or you can just click here. And I love it, it looks like a PowerPoint. It looks much more professional than you uh, sharing your screen. Yes, but as I already said, takes time to load if you have very high quality images. Of course, it depends on your students. You can do literally whatever. Uh, what I do is just ask students to write in a chat box and I write in their place. So they say this is, I don't know, whatever, nine plus something. Listen to your students and let them help you fill the worksheet or uh, join the presentation or use the presentation. Uh, let's share our screens. Do you share your screen? Click on this button. You can share your entire screen. I don't suggest doing this because as you can see here, it's very glitchy. Uh, you can either share an application window uh, or share Chrome tab, which I urge you to do because you're sharing basically just one thing. So I'm going to share one of the pages that I have in my browser, which is this website. So basically when you share this one, the students see only that screen. So as long as you see, 
It's okay to share one tab. This is the only thing that your students see. And if you have another task to complete or they're doing something, you can freely open the task and go anywhere. Uh, and of course, it looks, it looks, again, more professional. To stop sharing, just click on this button. And as you can see, the default presentation is going to come back. Uh, to check other options, you can click on settings. Let's see what we have there. So you can uh, disable all of this. Why? Because definitely it works better for everybody. Put the font to 100%. You don't want pop-ups. You don't want audio alerts. You don't want none of this because it is very distracting. Trust me. So disallow all of these things or you're going to go crazy. Basically, that's it. To go to data savings, uh, again, I urge you to click off and I urge you to click this as well. So if uh, you're having a lot of students, for example, 50 people, as I do in my classes, uh, you need to disable webcams because students sometimes have difficulties turning them off and it slows down everything, literally everything. Uh, again, if you write something, pardon me, if you write something, uh, you can save everything. So every class can have saved chats. So you can see exactly what everybody wrote. Uh, another thing that you can use this, and this is what I love. I love this one. So, uh, of course, you can do the activity by yourself, or you can just click this button, which says, turn multi-user whiteboard on. What happens then? Then if you have people, you can see their names and everybody can do everything on this page. So everybody's going to be able to write. So if you do this, make sure that you have uh, an activity which is meaningful. So don't just let them scroll around. Uh, that would be all. Uh, when you want to finish, uh, it's not, uh, you can just click uh, end meeting. You will disconnect everyone. Close the window, refresh just to make sure that you ended it, and click end here. When you click it, it is going to go to your uh, to your old conferences. Now, another thing that you want to do is go to settings. When you're not having classes, always drag and drop the conferences back down. Why? Because students are students. They're going to click to, to test it out. And if they just click to test it out, if they click on start here, the blue button, everybody's going to get a spammy email. So try to disable it when you're not having conferences. Thank you for listening. Uh, that would be all. See you in another tutorial. And I wish you luck in your online classes in Canvas.